Out of all the reptiles and amphibians out there that you can own, one of the easiest ones to take care of would be the American toad. But just because they're easy doesn't mean that you can neglect them. They need a proper feeding and cleaning schedule just like any other reptile or amphibian. So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a proper environment for and how to take care of the American toad. Let's start with the right enclosure. I find that the plastic bins work better than glass tanks because they hold in humidity better. If you're using a glass tank, it usually comes with a screen lid and those lids tend to dry out everything on the inside. So you can get it to work, but if you do use a screen lid with a glass tank, make sure you wrap the screen lid with like aluminum foil or something to hold in the moisture inside. The minimum size requirement for a toad or two would be two square feet. So you can put one or two in there and then any additional toad you add after that, I recommend adding another square foot of space to the enclosure. So if you have three toads, you need three square feet, four toads, four square feet, and so on. But if you just want one, then I'd still stick with that minimum of a two square foot surface area. Assuming you're using a plastic bin, which is what I recommend, don't forget to drill holes on the side. And my bin here is just going to slide into my snake rack on the bottom shelf where it's just not heated. But if you're using one at home, you're probably going to need a lid, of course. And make sure that the lid has locks on it like this. These are external locks and they will actually hold down the lid itself. Some uh, styles of bins, like this one actually, have lids that just set on top and kind of snap into place by pressing them down. But those are pretty flimsy, especially on the sides, and the animals could possibly still sneak out. So make sure that the bin that you're housing them in has these locks. For the substrate at the bottom, you're going to need something that holds in moisture. You can use things like Eco Earth, Cypress, or what I use is a combination of the two. I have Eco Earth and Cypress mixed together in here. I think the Cypress or the Eco Earth is at the very bottom, but this is what I like to use. Toads like to dig and they kind of burrow themselves backwards into their substrate. So I recommend giving them at least a couple inches worth of bedding so that they can completely bury themselves underneath too if they want to remain hidden. Now's the fun part where you get to add enrichment into their enclosures. Enrichments would be things that help keep their minds mentally stimulated. So one that's obvious but still provides enrichment would be a water dish that's big enough to soak in. They can jump in and out, soak their bodies, rehydrate, etc. I like to put the water dish in the corner of the enclosure and that way it leaves more room or as much room as possible for all of the other objects that I'll put in later. And I also will dig a hole to the bottom but just in the center of the uh, water dish and I'll try to build it up a little bit on the sides and that encourages the toads to dig underneath and kind of create a little hideout underneath there and that they seem to really enjoy. I'll get that all snug in the corner. For their water dish, you can use well water or bottled water, and you can also use tap water, but at least in the United States, I'm not sure about other countries, but here in the US, the, our tap water is chlorinated for our use. So if you use that for an amphibian, which drinks through its skin and therefore absorbs chemicals through its skin, chlorine is toxic to toads and other amphibians, so you need to use tap water dechlorinator in order to purify the water for them. Some people use distilled water for their animals, but I actually advise against it because although the chlorine is removed from distilled water, so is every other naturally found mineral, and a lot of those minerals are essential to the toad's health. So you're giving them basically pure H2O, but it's missing the other minerals that they need. So I would recommend bottled tap water that's been dechlorinated, or you can use well water. Next, just for funsies, I like to add some dead leaves, scatter them around, something for them to jump on and underneath, and hold in moisture as they absorb the, uh, the water from inside the enclosure. I suggest sticking with leaves from species of trees that are native to North America, or native to where the toads are, because being so sensitive, since they're amphibians, it wouldn't surprise me if they were even sensitive to other species of leaves from other countries. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to play it safe, and I, well, I live in the US, so I'm, it's kind of easy for me, but I use species that they would naturally come by in the wild. And actually, I think we're gonna put these in the middle here because I have other plans next. Next, we're gonna add a happy little patch of moss right over here. I'm lucky enough where I live where I can just walk down the street and there's a nice little spot that wild sphagnum moss grows naturally. So I use chunks of that and bring it inside for these guys. But if you don't live in an area where you can find moss naturally in the wild, don't worry because they sell prepackaged moss. 
You can buy this from, I think this is yep, from Galapagos, but I think most retailers sell this kind of stuff. It's good for salamanders, dart frogs, newts, all sorts of things. It works really well for the toads too. Even though this isn't live moss and fresh, it'll work just as well as the fresh stuff that I find outside. You have to add a little bit of water to it. You see it's really compressed right now. It's actually in the shape of the bag. But once you add water, it expands a little bit and it looks good as new. Just like the water that we'll eventually add to the water dish here, you're gonna need water that is dechlorinated. I use the API tap water conditioner and you can just take this and pour it right on the moss. The moss will take a little bit of time to uh, moisten up, but once it absorbs the water that you put on it, it'll actually look really nice. For structures inside of the environment, you can add things for them to climb on or underneath. My toads, for some reason, really like sitting on the top of this half log, so I make sure I always have it in here for them. The only problem with using these half logs or these half cave type things is they tend to mold pretty quickly, which makes sense because it's wood in a constantly humid environment. So if you use these, make sure you keep a close eye on them and clean them off immediately if you see any mold starting to grow. You can also use artificial plants for the toads, but you don't want to fill it up so much that they don't have room to move and hop around. So this time I'm not going to add artificial plants to the enclosure because it's pretty well set up at the moment and if I were to add more it'd probably just become too crowded for the toads. And finally, you add the toads. Go! Go on! Check it out! It's all clean and new. Go on! Please? Love it! Fine, here. Where will you go? Apparently nowhere. One of the great things about toads is that they don't need any special heat source or special lighting. They just like room temperature, given that your room temperature is between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take a few degrees, it can fluctuate a little. You just don't want huge fluctuations throughout the day because that's what could stress them out. As far as lighting goes, they don't need any special like UVB light like bearded dragons do because if you think about it, if you live in the United States, when you observe these in the wild, they're most active at night. That's when they spawn, that's when they're just awake in general, You'll occasionally see them during the daytime, but the majority of the time they are very active at night. So they do not require UVB light, although they do still need a regular day and night light cycle. So I recommend keeping them in either a clear glass if you can make that work, or even better, that clear plastic tote or container. And keep that in a well-lit room of your house so that as the sun goes up and down, they can still have that natural day and night light cycle. Once you have a proper setup ready for the toads, maintenance is really easy. You'll have to occasionally rehydrate the substrate or the moss as it naturally dries out over time. And when you do that, again, make sure that you're using dechlorinated water to do so. You'll also have to feed the toads, of course. They will eat just about everything, and I'd recommend feeding them every two to three days or so. You can give them a variety of things, including crickets, cockroaches, including both dubia, roaches, and red runners. And you can give them things like earthworms, they love those. For the harder bodied insects, like crickets and cockroaches, I recommend feeding them bugs that are about the same size as the length in between their eyes. If it's much bigger, it can be harder for them to mash up because they have those hard chitinous exoskeletons and it can cause impaction issues later down the line. For the softer bodied insects, like earthworms, you can feed them significantly larger pieces. Like the rule of thumb I go by is two to three times the length of the space in between their eyes, if that makes sense. And that rule applies to earthworms because you still wouldn't want to feed them like an entire night crawler, you know? But they can handle bigger chunks than they would be able to for crickets or cockroaches. They are pigs too. They'll eat like seven to 10 appropriately sized roaches or crickets at a time, or like four or five chunks of earthworms, but still just feed them every two to three days because they can get overweight if you feed them every day. Although they don't need fancy or special lighting like UVB lighting, they do still need calcium in their diet. And just like with other reptiles, you can get the calcium in them by dusting their insects with calcium powder. I recommend doing this twice a week or so. I do it every single time I feed them just to be on the safe side. But twice a week is probably the minimum that I'd recommend. And this container will last a very long time because all you need is just a pinch of the calcium powder and dust the insects with it in a Ziploc bag, shake them up a little bit, and then feed them to the toad. Uh, another trick I've found is to take a toothpick and poke a bunch of holes inside of the seal and then you can use it kind of like a salt shaker. Feeding crickets is as easy as dumping the crickets into the enclosure because they'll crawl all around and catch the eye of the toads and they'll eat them quite 
quite easily. But for dubia roaches and earthworms, I recommend moving the toads into a separate container to feed them those. Because roaches and earthworms will dig underneath the substrate and then they'll hide and they won't be found. The toads will find some of them, but if you wanna make sure that they're getting all of the food they need and therefore all of the calcium powder that they need, I just recommend feeding them in a separate container because then you know they're eating everything that you're giving them. Other than that, make sure you change the substrate once a month or so and spot clean as needed. You can also soak the ornaments and uh, especially if you see any mold growing, remove that right away. But they are overall a very easy pet to care for. They're entertaining to watch, they're curious little things, they jump all around, they dig, they use like the entire enclosure that you give them. Oh, she's digging, getting comfy. They might not be the brightest animals out there, but I think that adds to their uh, cuteness factor as well. You can handle them if you'd like. I do occasionally for educational purposes, but since they are, again, amphibians and therefore absorb everything through their skin, make sure you don't have anything on your hands before you touch them. This includes lotion, sunscreen, bug spray, just about anything. So to be on the safe side, I recommend rinsing your hands off in just regular water, not soap, before you handle them, just in case there's anything on your fingers that happens to irritate their skin. There's an easy test that you can do to tell if your toad is a male or a female. I mean, generally females are much larger than males. Come back here. But you can test them out by holding them gently on the sides of their tympanums here. And if they chirp, they're a male. Just like that. D don't eat your brother. That's rude. Now the question is, where do you get a pet toad? Sadly, these guys aren't bred in captivity very often at all. There might be some private breeders, and I guess they are pretty easy to breed, but there's just so many in the wild that everyone just gets them from the wild, which I'm not a huge fan of. I suggest if you really want a pet toad, either find one that's being rehomed through a rescue, or you can grab one from the wild. Pet stores usually have wild caught specimens, by the way, but you can get one from the wild, and if you do that route, uh, make sure that it's a smaller one. If you grab a big adult from the wild, then you're taking a breeding female, most likely, from the wild population, and you're preventing her from being able to reproduce and add more babies to the population. So grab a younger one, especially like babies, if you're up to the challenge of feeding them, because those are the ones that are most likely to get eaten by predators anyway. And I say the little ones are a challenge because the toadlets, they're called, they were the tiny ones, like half an inch long, that just emerged from the water. They are so small that they can't really eat very large of prey items, of course, so most of them are going to need pinhead crickets or flightless fruit flies to feed them. But again, those are the ones that are most likely going to get eaten by predators anyway, so those are the best ones to grab from the wild, and then you can raise them up, and they'll be a nice, healthy, happy toad as adults. I think that about covers it though. So hopefully this video helped you uh, figure out how to properly set up an enclosure for a toad and how to take care of them in the long run. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you next time. Don't eat your brother's face. He's not food. Uh oh, I'm not food either. Quit that. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you think you're stuck? <sighs> well, here. You're welcome. It's a good thing you guys are cute.